You may have never heard of the U.S. Ministry of the Colonies, but this is the name that former Cuban revolutionary Fidel Castro gave to the Organization of American States, or OAS. Well, what exactly did Fidel mean by this? The OAS is supposed to represent the 35 countries of the Western Hemisphere in defense of peace, equality, and national sovereignty. This all sounds good, but the OAS has acted against these principles in defense of U.S. foreign policy in the region. After Cuba's socialist revolution, they kicked out the Caribbean island because of its ideology. Efforts were also made to kick Chile out of the OAS following the election of leftist President Salvador Allende. These efforts were dropped after Salvador Allende was removed in a bloody coup led by General Augusto Pinochet. In fact, countries like Chile, Argentina, Uruguay, Brazil, and Bolivia remained as member states of the OAS, despite the violent governments that came into power in those countries. The U.S. has also been able to wield its influence over organizations that are aligned to, but independent of, the OAS, such as the Inter-American Development Bank and the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights. For years, the OAS has been targeting leftist governments in the region, especially Venezuela. OAS chief Luis Almagro has made no qualms about his connections and support for Venezuela's violent opposition. So much so that OAS member nations have reproached Almagro for acting like a politician and not a diplomat. Almagro is calling for sanctions on Venezuela, just like the OAS put sanctions on Cuba many years ago. But now, there are alternatives that didn't exist in the 1960s. UNASUR and CELAC, for example, offer a space for governments of the region to come together to integrate, to build, without the influence of the U.S. and Canada. So while right-wing leaders continue to try to use the OAS as a weapon, it may be the OAS itself that's living on borrowed time.